Hey everybody, Richie here from Rocket Chronicles. And in this video, I'm going to ponder and think about how to proceed with the construction of my Shapeshifter 75 millimeter rocket kit that I got from Wildman not too long ago. So today, Sunday, February 6th, uh, 2022, and it's very cold here in New Jersey where I am. It's extremely cold outside and it's certainly good weather to stay inside and build rockets, think about building rockets, or think about anything other than being outside in the cold. So let's get right to it and look at where I'm at in the building process of this rocket. And actually at this point in time, I am nowhere. All I, <laughs> I'm just kind of looking up. I'm nowhere at this point, um, but I'm making this video for a reason. So let's look down here at the table. Uh, all I have right at this point in time is the rocket kit and I have a box of electronics. So I'm a little unprepared here. Let me just turn this booster section around and set the booster section down here. Now I have the fins just kind of taped in there uh, for a mock-up and I got the switch band and couplers and stuff tape just so I can put the rocket together and pick the whole thing up and move and keep all the parts in one spot. Nothing is epoxied. I haven't begun any construction at this point in time. So we have, look at the kit real quick. We have upper airframe. We have uh, the electronics bay, AV bay, switch band. Uh, we have a nose cone over here and we have the booster and the fins, motor tube is inside, and we have some bulk plates and stuff that are over here in this box. So I'm going to set that nose cone back there. I'm going to put this over here. I'm going to get rid of this tube because it's echoing my voice. I don't know if the microphone can hear it, but I can hear it and it is distracting. So that's where I'm at at this point in time. Uh, however, this is a very crucial point because I essentially have a clean slate uh, and I get to decide at this point um, how I want to proceed in certain parts of the construction process. And I, I say it's a crucial point because when you do start epoxy and and there's a lot of things that once they're done, they can't be undone. Obviously dried epoxy is something that you just can't undo um, once you've done it. Or actually you can undo it, but you don't want to undo it. You just want to have a plan and then do it and then be done with it is essentially, I mean, it's epoxy. Everybody knows that. So let's break down the places where I have uh, options and weigh a few of these options and see how I want to go ahead and proceed at this time. So down here on the table, we are looking at basically the fin mock -up, fin can mock-up. So the first thing up is the motor tube and the fin can construction. So the motor tube, the kit comes with a 15 inch motor tube. And if we lay our straight edge down here, we see that that puts our, our motor tube is just above where the fins stop. Okay, but the thing is, I've never flown a rocket with a motor tube that's been shorter than what the hardware is. So I have 54 millimeter hardware that goes all the way up. At this point, I have hardware that goes up to 28 uh, inches. So I, I'm thinking I, I definitely have to, I'm kind of forced to, if I want to follow my rule here, I want to have a motor tube that's longer than what's in there. And I'm going to also have to have centering rings to go along with the longer motor tube. So when you get these kits, there's certainly enough stuff in the kit that you can build your rocket, but it's kind of a basic build. And it's kind of just like, I call it a starting point is really what a kit is to me. So <clears throat> that's the thing. I, I'm thinking I'm gonna have to go with a longer tube. I mean, I might wanna fly this thing on a really long K and maybe put even a really long motor tube in. You can get um, used to fly those, those long L's. So anyway, second thing on my list uh, for the, is how I'm going to build this fin section. So for, for the most part, you can follow the directions, the instructions just exactly the way they are. And you would have a nice 
fine build. There would be no problem with it. I don't know why I'm shaking my camera there. So you'd have a nice fine build. There'd be no problems with it. But what I, it's just not the way I normally build them. Uh, I normally build three inch, four inch. And when I built my L3, which was a six inch, I would cut this little, uh, this little extra right out of here so that the, the groove went all the way down. And what I would do is I would construct my fins onto the motor tube outside of here. Now, I, I was looking at the instructions, and the instructions are telling you to kind of um, put the Kevlar strap on and that kind of stuff. But at some point, they want you to put the motor tube in and then put uh, your fins on and then pull the centering ring out anyway. It was a process that I'm just not familiar with doing it that way. So I like building it outside. And then you have to have these cut out so that you can slide the whole thing in. Still put your Kevlar strap on, run your Kevlar strap up. That's going to eventually hook to that end. So I, I like doing it that way. The other thing is then that leads you to the open space inside. Do you Are you going to foam it? Uh, do you want to fill up that open cavity? Some people like to fill it up. Some people don't. <clears throat> In my opinion, it serves two purposes. One is that it tends to uh, make the rocket a little more solid because it's got that, that open space is now got something in there. But also it lets the rocket float. Now, I don't plan on flying this rocket and landing it in water, but there is... Uh, at the field that I would fly it at the most, which would probably be the Metro field, there is a river there, and I don't want to land in that river. I don't think I've ever landed in the river. I've landed in the trees next to the river. That's close. That was scary enough. But um, I've seen people land in the river, and I've seen rockets sink. They go in, and that's it. They go down, and they're fishing around trying to figure out where it's at and that's really not the kind of river that you want to get in and start looking around it's if you've never seen it never been there just take my word for that so then the next thing we're up on the agenda here would be the motor retention so i'm very familiar with aeropack motor retention that's what i like to use <clears throat> excuse me that's what i've used a lot and you got two, basically two styles. You got the thread on style, you got the tail cone style. So I have to decide what I'm gonna do there. Probably gonna go with the tail cone, although it's a little more. I gotta look at my budget and see, you know, how that's gonna play out. Uh, either way, it's gonna be an aero pack um, on there. So the next thing, and I guess the last thing for the booster section would be, what am I gonna do with the other end? Let me turn this around very slowly. And of course, I still hit the camera. And that is, do I put the coupler in here and just leave it open? Or do I make a zipperless design where I seal this off with a bulkhead and a U-bolt and run the Kevlar strap from the motor tube up and you can run it underneath the, the plate that is underneath of the bulkhead that the U-bolt attaches to? Again, so all these decisions that you got to make before you can move forward. Um, now let's go ahead and move on to the altimeter bay. Okay, so for the altimeter bay, I guess the first thing I gotta look at is do I wanna put all the electronics, the altimeters and the GPS into the same bay or do I wanna move the GPS to the nose cone? So let's look at our electronics here. So uh, we have the RTX. I have a switch hooked to this. And we have the RRC3. And I don't have the, the backup altimeter handy, but I would have a backup altimeter. So just pretend that's the perfect plate. Uh, it could be a backup altimeter, but anyway... These two can be tethered together. My old system that I had was the Arts. The Arts had a much bigger, you can see it in another video that I did. Uh, the last time I used it, I guess, was 2014. It was a much longer, wider board, heavier, took a heavier battery. 
but they had to be tethered. They could either be tethered side by side, the arch GPS and the arch two altimeter, or you could put one on one side of the sled, one on the other side, but they still had to have a wire that ran from one side to the other. Obviously this is a lot smaller and you can tether this in that same way. It has a COM port. Uh, let's see, there's a COM port here in the center on this one. And there is a COM port here. And I'm still waiting for the cable to come. I ordered it. But the, from what I understand, these also have the option where you can hook a Bluetooth module to each one. And they can speak to each other. So this guy doesn't have to be here. He can be up in here. In the nose cone or in the nose cone this way i guess it would probably go in this way but either way so do i put it in the nose cone or do i keep it and that's that's going to be a big decision there figuring out i don't think i've ever put uh, a gps tracker in a nose cone i've always had it in the electronics bay and always had good luck with it just connecting and everything like that so now Next one sounds like kind of a crazy one, but do I use eye bolts or eye nuts? I have both here um, in amongst all my rocket parts. I was looking the other day and I have brand new stainless steel eye bolts, quarter inch, and I have brand new stainless steel eye nuts that'll go on quarter 20 rod. So I got a decision there. And then what style of ejection canisters? And let's see if I look over here someplace i have the rocket junkies and again i'm hitting my camera all through this video i have the rocket junkies uh ejection canisters i've never used them before i've used many kinds of ejection canisters from homemade stainless steel ones that were very similar to these or I've used, you know, the plastic vials where you drill them out. I've used the public missile style. Um, I would like to use something that looks nice, but it has to be functional before it can, you know, worry about it looking nice. Now, if it can be functional and look nice at the same time, well, that would, that would be nice. Um, that would be great. Switches. Um, I always used the, this style switch, these push buttons. I would cut a hole in the switch band these would be on the inside and i would just i would just reach in with a screwdriver push the button and you're good to go i uh, never had a problem with this style switch i always thought these were great i have other style switches i have uh, ex external switches that i can put on the outside i have keyed switches screw switches i have all kind but i like I always just like these the best, especially for bench testing. You could just punch them and turn them on. So uh, I guess the other thing would be what type of a harness am I going to use or how long of a harness? And that's kind of a simple question, um, but you still got to think about, you know, do you want to have 30 feet and 20 feet or 30 and 30? And do you want to use Kevlar? Or do you want to use tubular nylon? I'll probably use Kevlar, probably be quarter inch. And I'll probably do 20 and 30. So that one I kind of, I had on my list, but I kind of know what I'm going to do there. And then last but not least is going to be the parachute. So am I going to make my own chute or am I going to buy a chute? Now, originally I had planned to make a chute for this. And I was going to do it as a project where I was going to make a video of me making the parachute, how I do it. They're not the fanciest chutes, but they work. And they're functional and they look they look good but they're just not super super fancy uh but i kind of decided i think i'm going to go with a commercial parachute for this rocket and i have a fin can a four inch fin can that's all finished and the rocket needs to be finished and i think i'm going to save the building the scratch chute for that so this i'm going to buy so what do i buy do i buy i don't have a chute specifically sized for this rocket so what do i get do i get a giant leap which i've used the most do i get a rocket man which i have have a couple of them but they're smaller and they work great or do i get a recon um, which i've never used 
So I'm not really sure. Here is just a quick glimpse at one of my scratch shoots. And this one is black, orange, and there is some white. This one I made with flat nylon, and I made it in the style of like a giant leap or a rocket fan. Um, it has a slider. I made my own slider for it. Got a D-ring on the top uh, for the deployment bag, everything. Uh, and I can't really unfold it. This is a pretty large chute. This is for a four inch rocket, a, a heavy, long four inch rocket. So anyway, I, I kind of get, I'll show you a little bit of the sewing. This is Kevlar thread. Um, this is, well, that's the slider. I use some just red thread here. And I, I just do, you know, it's not nothing super fancy. Normally this, you would run a double stitch. That would be a double, you know, needle machine and everything. I, I don't have all that. On the underside, it looks like that. So I did have some Kevlar in there. You can't see it on this side. Anyway, decisions, deci decisions, decisions, decisions. I only have two brain cells. They're waving to each other. So decisions drive me crazy when it comes to what to do. But after this video, I'll kind of work it all out. I'll put an order in, get the stuff I need, because I need to get moving on this project. Hey, thanks so much for watching the video. I know it's a bit long, uh, but this is Rocket Chronicles. Just me chron chronicalizing my rocketry uh, in 2022. Hit like, hit subscribe, come back again.